How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now the MateBook D14 from Huawei is their new compact on the go notebook that does look and feel very familiar, which is a good thing. Change is inevitable. Change is all around us. We live in an ever changing, ever evolving world. What matters most is how we handle change. Embrace the change with amazing deals on top of brands from Computer Mania. With 32 stores across South Africa, including newly built stores at Brooklyn Mall, Colonnade Shopping Center, and the Galena Shopping Center, Computer Mania offers the latest technology with exceptional service. Shop in-store or online at computermania.co.za and embrace the change. Computer Mania, your technology universe. The MateBook D14 we have here does have a Ryzen 5 3500U, 8 gigs of DDR4 memory and a 500 gig NVMe SSD. It also has onboard graphics with the Vega 8 from AMD. You do also have the option of getting it with a Ryzen 7 3700U with Vega 10 graphics, which is going to be a bit more powerful. Now the specs aren't anything too crazy, but it will be great for using it for some business and also for some school work, as it is nice, small and light. If you would like to go for something a bit bigger, you do also have the Huawei D15, which is a 15.6 inch model. And then also there is the top end unit, which is available with a 10th generation IS7 on the Huawei X Pro unit. Now, considering the pricing of this laptop, you do get a lot of premium features for your bucks. With the price starting at around 500 a pound for the 256 gig a model on Amazon UK, it's unfortunately, of course, not available on the US store. But here in South Africa, it is also starting at around 13,000 Rand. The body is made out of aluminum alloy, which does feel a very nice and premium. You do get also two different colors, the mystic silver, which we have here, and then also the space gray. The design is elegant and stylish, so using this in a meeting with some other board members, you won't draw any unnecessary attention towards that flashy RGB laptop, so it will be great for that. Now the body does have some flex to it, but it's not too bad considering how thin and lightweight it is. With it only measuring in at 15.9 millimeters and only weighing a mere 1.38 kilograms. Taking a look around the body, on the left side you do get a USB 3.1 Type A port, an HDMI, and a USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type C port, which also doubles for your charging ports. On the right side you get a USB 2.0 port and then also your 3.5 millimeter combo jack. Now I have to say seeing a USB 2.0 port on a laptop in 2020 is a bit disappointing, but disappointment is what 2020 is all about, as we all know. But at least you can always use it for your wireless peripherals if you wanted to hook that up. Now like I mentioned before, the type C port that you get is also the charging port for the laptop which was a quite surprising as you usually only get that on some of the more expensive models. So kudos for a way for that. To go along with that, the included charger is also a 65 watts, which means it's fast charging at two, which is a, another premium feature while we included. That almost kind of makes up for the USB 2.0 port, almost. Now as for the display, it is a IPS panel with a max resolution of 1080p and also a brightness of 250 and nits. It also covers 84% of the body, which is quite nice. Now for a normal use on some photo or a video editing, the screen should be just a fine. Just don't expect it to do a very high quality color grading work as the color accuracy is a bit lacking here. It does only cover 69.9% .9 of the sRGB color gamut and also only 44.3% of the Adobe RGB color gamut. 
It does also lack some brightness and you will struggle to properly see it when sitting in a room with a lot of light, not to mention outside. Now, seeing that it is an IPS panel, viewing angles aren't too bad. You're still able to see most of the details when viewing from the sides or at the top or at the bottom. It just turns a bit darker. As for lifting up the display, you can't unfortunately do that with a single finger as it's a bit too light. So you will need to use both your, your hands to do that. Now on the keyboard side, the keys do have a nice tactile feel to them, making typing on them quite a delight. I didn't experience any keyboard flex really as the laptop is so thin. The keys do feel a bit plasticky though, uh, but it doesn't feel too cheap really. Now there is also a backlight, but it is extremely soft, which is kind of sad to see, but definitely not a deal breaker. Now, something interesting about the keyboard is that you do have a little camera button between the F6 and the F7 key. If you press it, you will notice it pop up and reveal your webcam. Now, this is quite a nice little feature where you can just pop up the camera if you're actually going to use it, which we don't really do a lot. And you don't have to actually, for some privacy, take duct tape and stick it over the webcam. So I do honestly like it. Also, if you do close the laptop, it is going to close along with that. And when opening it up, it's going to open up again. As for the webcam's quality, it's nothing too great really. It's 720p. It's just going to be good enough for your Skype or your Zoom sessions. Uh, the microphone is also not the best but again for most of the stuff it, it'll be okay and also it is again the nostril viewing webcam so yeah make make sure you, you blow your nose beforehand because otherwise you don't want to show that but it's again definitely good enough for uh, most of your applications now on the right side of your keyboard is your power button, which also doubles as your fingerprint sensor. What's cool about this is as you switch it on, it actually already takes your fingerprint and then it logs you into your device. Now as for the trackpad, it is a nice and a large where it does also have a nice a smooth glide over it. And the buttons are integrated, giving you that a little bit of extra space to work with. It's also nice and accurate with a clicks feeling direct. Now as for benchmarking, it is definitely not going to be the most powerful laptop on the market with that Ryzen 5 3500U. Uh, it does have plenty of cores to do everything, but it's also not the fastest, especially because it's also in such a thin body. On Geekbench, we scored 718 on a single score and 2,944 on a multi-score. We did also throw some CSGO in there as well, but we had to play it on low settings, also on a 720p resolution, where we got around 60 FPS in our benchmark. Now, it's not going to be the greatest for that. Uh, it is definitely going to lag a bit behind everything else. But if you want to play some games or do some higher production or work, you do have some extra horsepower to do a few things, especially just some light photo editing. However, for the SSD, you do have an included NVMe, which is very fast, reaching speeds over 2000 megabytes a second. So that is going to help boot up your device quite quickly and also make everything nice and snappy. As for temperatures, the laptop did stay pretty cool most of the time. Only when putting it under a lot of stress did we really notice it going up to around 80 degrees Celsius and still stay reasonably quiet. We also didn't experience any thermal throttling going on from our benchmark, so that's at least good. Then getting into one of the most important parts about a thin and light laptop like this, and that is the battery. So the D14 does have a 56 watt hour battery where it did charge full in around two hours. And we got around seven hours of multimedia use playing some YouTube videos on the max 250 nits, but on the power saving mode, which isn't the greatest necessarily, but it will definitely get you through stage four load shedding at least, where we do spend a couple of hours without any power. Thank you, ESCOM. Now, luckily, you do also have your fast charger included again to charge it up nice and quickly. Now, a very nice feature on the MateBooks is this feature called Huawei Share. 
Now, note that this is only for Huawei phone users, unfortunately, with the EMUI 10 and upwards. Now, on your Huawei supported phone, you can just switch on your Huawei share option and then tap your phone onto the sticker on the laptop. This will give you a mirror image of your phone on the laptop screen and from there you can drag and drop a file to copy from and to the phone or the laptop very nifty. You can also back up your videos and your photos directly through that which is nice and simple as well. Now a feature that kind of surprised me was the bottom firing front speakers that actually sounded really good. They're definitely loud enough for all of your music, watching your movies and so on if you want to play some games as well maybe, but it's definitely good enough for the majority of things. So yeah, sounds good. So in conclusion, the Huawei MateBook D14 is a very good all-arounder laptop with a very nice build quality, a lot of premium features like that Type-C fast charging, and then also the pop-up web camera. I actually quite like that quite a lot. Making it also a very attractive laptop for a business users or if you want to use it for a school, especially being that it's so lightweight and small, you can just pop it into your bag and it's not going to bother you. So big thanks to Huawei for sending over the MateBook D14 for this review. If you guys want to get it for yourself, I will leave links in the video description. And then also, if you guys enjoyed this review, please like, share, comment, comment like always. And I'll check all of you next time. Cheers, guys.